this morning to find that the nine star broccoli plants are having a bit of a hard time with the pigeons. So I'm just taking out the stakes that were holding up the old tomatoes, the ones that got blight that I've taken out. And I'm gonna use them to prop up the netting a bit higher on the nine star. Uh, I don't think our neighbor is that keen on his yellow courgettes because every couple of weeks we keep finding them on our paths. They're quite big. Kind of like a bottle of wine size. Not sure what he thinks we're going to do with them, but we will find something. So these are my nine star. You can see they've got really big and they've grown through the mesh. Really healthy looking plants, but they're being mullered by the pigeons because the mesh is so solid. The pigeons can just land on it. It'll take their weight and they just eat to their heart's content. So I'm going to take the mesh off this side, but I'm going to leave it on that side because those plants have got a way to go before they're too big. Okay. I get a lot of questions about this steel mesh that we use on our allotment and I mean it's understandable we use it everywhere it's what the chicken cage is made out of it's what the fruit cage is made out of and obviously we use it like this over the beds I'm going to put a bit about what it is and where you can get it from in the video description underneath today so if you are interested have a look down there we've had this mesh for absolutely donkey's years but you can buy on Amazon so I'll just put a link to like the exact mesh that we've got down there uh, if you're interested or if you're looking for it. Okay, well, this bit of netting support is going to be about as simple as it gets other than just throwing the netting over the top. I'm just going to hammer the four posts into the four corners of the plants and throw the netting over the top. When you just throw netting straight over brassicas, it's fine if you're trying to dissuade uh, pigeons or things like that, but it's not so good if you're using it for the butterflies because if the leaves are touching the surface of the netting, the butterflies can lay their eggs on the leaves like without any hindrance, so the netting is pretty pointless. But so far, although I've seen quite a lot of butterflies around, we really haven't had that big a problem with caterpillars. Even with the netting over, I do find you are always gonna find some, and as long as you kind of keep your eye open for them, just pick them off and the chickens love them so that's really handy eventually i will cut a perfect piece of the soft butterfly netting and put it right the way over these posts all the way down to the ground but up until now we've only had that steel mesh over them no butterfly protection at all and they've been completely fine so what i'm going to do is just use the old bit of netting that was draped over something else and put it across the top of these four posts purely to stop the pigeons and then i'll think about um, putting some serious netting on later on okay i'm going to dig up some carrots Camera's up that end? It is. Oh, okay. oh, that's a split one. Should I take it? Yeah. It's not going to do anything after it's split, so you can use that one straight away. We have not had a great year for carrots this year, and I'm actually not going to blame the weather, unbelievably. I've blamed the weather for everything else this year, but I'm not going to blame it for that. I think it's down to a number of reasons. So previously, I've never been able to grow carrots particularly well. They've always been a bit like this, a bit piecemeal and split. And we've had sort of carrot root fly problems. But the last couple of years, we really went to town with preparing the beds. So we did a lot of sieving so that the soil was really fine. We've got very sandy soil anyway, so they tend to like that. It's not that they rot out or anything, but really we we put a lot of effort into it and also we were really careful during germination to make sure that they stayed really really damp all that kind of thing and this year we got complacent and we've ended up with a lot of gnarly carrots uh, in fact i say a lot of gnarly carrots not even that many because we had very poor germination on the first set and the third set that we did i was intending to do a lot of successional sowing but two sets of my successional sowing were completely eaten off by a mixture of slugs and chickens so Basically, it hasn't been a great year for carrots. But one thing that has been a big success has been the carrot root fly box that I made. We used this last year and we've used it again this year and there has been no carrot root fly problems at all or if there has been, it's been really minor. And we've decided to fully commit to carrots next year by putting this bed together, which you saw a couple of weeks ago and you see how good the germination is. We were really careful, we covered it with plastic. Germination is fantastic. So I'm really hoping that not all is lost for 2021, we will get a good harvest of carrots. <laughs> just very late. Well, we're just about to head home and the last thing I'm gonna do is pick some oregano. So throughout the summer, we've been picking this kind of sporadically as we want to eat it and using it in cooking, etc. But I'm gonna give it a really, really good chop back now by about a third, two thirds in some areas, and then dry the tops and put them in a jar for use over winter. This is a really good time because the plant's really lush. If I chop it back now, it'll have loads of time to recover before the weather gets cold. 
Previously, I've always been a tie them up with string and hang them up, you know, in the kitchen or whatever to dry off the herbs. Having recently got the dryer where I was planning to be drying my acres of chilies that I haven't grown this year, <laughs> I've started using it for other things and it is phenomenal for drying the herbs. So I'm just going to cut all of this back in one go, put it in there and, you know, 24 hours later, I can put it in the jar without it collecting dust hanging up somewhere. <laughs> Maybe the dust adds flavour, I'm not sure. Good morning, it is, uh, it was beautiful and sunny about 10 minutes ago and now some big black clouds have rolled over, so, oh uh, yeah, <laughs> it might be about to rain, but it was really sunny this morning. So one of the things that we're going to do today is, we're starting to think about um, what we're going to do over winter. And do you remember last year, so over winter and then well into this spring, well into this spring because we had such a cold spring, uh, it wasn't meant to be there that long, but still one of our beds had like a makeshift polytunnel over the whole lot of the bed, just with, you know, the mesh and then uh, polythene plastic over the top of it. Well, we're going to do that again this year and uh, we're just trying to work out which bed to do it in. So we're a bit limited for which beds it can go on because the beds that have got the bean arches in, the bean arches are staying where they are and then the poly bed won't actually fit on that end because it's taken up like a foot of one end of the bed. So it needs to be a bed that doesn't have a bean arch in it. It also needs to be a bed that we don't have things in that are going to be in there over winter or at least for a long time coming. So like the first bed we've got up this side has got a chimney wrapper in it and it's also got the permanent sorrel. Uh, the next bed up is got a bean tunnel the bed after that is a potential but we're thinking about doing um the brassicas in the first three beds on this end after the chimney wrapper bed so it's a bit of a logistical game and i think we've identified the bed that we're going to set aside for that which is the one that's currently got courgettes in it and some leeks had the celery in last year so that's the bed we're going to do we're going to clear everything out of that bed except for the courgettes which are obviously still going fine and i don't know if you remember when i planted the courgettes out uh, was before we'd had the manure delivery so we didn't have any to put on there so it's been a bit starved so we're going to clear the bed we're going to put the manure down now as a mulch it will be then kind of settling down until we're ready so the courgettes obviously don't last all that long i know they either wear themselves out or the weather gets too cold and they give up but there is only like four of them maybe five in that bed and there's lots of space between them where we've had the leaks and all that kind of stuff so as the things become ready we'll be planting them in there that's the pak choy and the mizuma and all those kind of things we'll be planting them in there and then as the weather gets cold courgettes will come out we'll fill the rest of the space and cover the bed that's the idea let's get on with that because i think it's going to rain <laughs> The first thing that's going to come out of this bed is this celery that we let go to seed. So this was planted last year and then it has gone to seed this year. I'm just going to cut each of the stems off and turn them upside down into this paper bag and then I will plonk them in the shed and see what comes of them. I think some of these seed have already gone. I haven't been that vigilant. I really just left it to flower because it was beautiful. And I'm not going to use this seed to regrow celery next year. I'm going to use it for culinary purposes. So we'll just see what we get. I do think some of it's been lost. It's gone completely over. You can see some of them still green. Some of them are completely dried out. So um, I don't hold out a great deal of hope, but we'll see what we get from it. There's a couple of other bits and pieces in here, like I said, that I'm going to clear. I've got some rocket up this end. This was a cultivated rocket, so it's got a really wide leaf. This was my first sowing of it of the year, and it bolted an absolute instant. Mm -hmm. We ended up just letting it go to flower because rocket flowers are lovely, and it will have self-seeded all over the place. So I'm going to take that out now. We're clearing the bed. In the rest of the bed, we do also have the nipper leeks that need to be taken out. We've been harvesting them a lot over the last mm, two months or so, as and when, but now I'm going to clear the whole lot of them out, and that means quite a big leek harvest. Nipper leeks are the very skinny pencil ones that I've talked to you about so many times before. Part of the reason that we've been able to grow them in this bed, which isn't covered with the Enviromesh, is because they're harvestable so quickly, they don't get affected by the Allium leaf miner, which is why the rest of my leeks are in another bed, all covered and cosy.
Also on the alley in front, we've got these white Lisbon spring onions at this end, which I had completely forgotten about. So surprise harvest. This is the dragon's tongue rocket that I was talking about. So the skinny leaf one, I don't think it's very dragon's tongue like. But I'm not going to rip this one completely out because it hasn't gone to seed. So I'm just going to chop it down and then mulch over the top of it. And if it grows back, it grows back. And if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. Earlier in the year when I was waiting for the big delivery of horse manure that we were after, uh, a lot of people asked me why I was using horse manure because uh, of the amino pyrolid damage and the fact that we'd had it the year before and that it was a risk. And I totally accept that it is a risk, but our soil is just sand. <laughs> it's not. This bed was mulched properly with like four inches. So it's two whole 80 litre bags on this space. Each year this happened last spring, so not earlier this year, but the spring before. That's how much went on the top of this. And now you can see. And it had another, what, half a bag put on it in May. And already the sand is just rising up through it. Our soil is so poor. Sand is really fantastic because things don't rot out in it. But my goodness, it can't hold any nutrients at all. So that's why we mulch. That's why we risk it with the horse manure. Because although there's lots of other things, I mean, we can't physically make enough compost to mulch the amount that we need to mulch. We're trying to build up our leaf mould reserves to kind of try and improve that. And things like mushroom compost would be a really good alternative, but it is so expensive. We just can't do it. The only way we can afford to do it is, uh, and it's still expensive, is going for horse manure. So that's why we're doing it. But yeah, just sand, just sand. But honestly, a freshly mulched bed doesn't it look lovely? <laughs> and this is the rocket just poking through, so there's a chance it'll survive. This is what we've harvested, so the leeks and the spring onions. We'll eat some of them for dinner and then I will chop and freeze the rest of them. Because that's quite a lot of leeks to get through. <laughs> Even if they are skinny. One of the loveliest things about growing dahlias is that the more you pick them, the more they flower. So I find picking things like tulips almost impossible because they flower the once and it just feels like you're robbing them of their flower. <laughs> but with the dahlias, you can just pick them and they just keep flowering. But it does mean that you also need to deadhead them to keep them going. Telling the difference between the old buds and the new buds, particularly on the open flowers, can be a bit tricky. So this is a gone one, that's spent, and this one, hasn't happened yet. Spent. See how it's just like slightly pointy and when you squeeze it they're a bit wet. Like a bit sad inside. That one needs to come off. They're a bit easier when it's a bit earlier before they've closed up because you can see they're gone but when they're really closed up it's very difficult. So I love dahlias because they're so good for the bees, but I know a lot of people say they don't like growing the really blousy ones like this because they're no good for the bees, but if you just leave them a bit longer, they do open up and then the bees love them. This is another single one, so absolutely beautiful. They have all of their pollen on show right from the start. You don't have to leave them. That is a new bud. And this is a good example because that is a new bud and one that needs to come off in the same, on the same stem. Even the pom-pom ones are good for the bees. You can see their spent flowers don't look the same as the single ones. They're much more, they kind of look like, almost like straw flowers when they're finished, like that. But they're a bit softer than straw flowers. But yeah, so these are completely closed up when they're new flowers. But as they age, they do let their pollen out and the bees do love them. So that one's all opened out, but like they start off like this. Like how gorgeous is that? last 
just have a look at this. Right, next thing on my list is I'm going to tidy the shed. Uh, it really needs doing. And while there's been a threat of rain, I haven't wanted to cart everything out of the shed and then it start raining. And then like having to panic throw everything back in there. So uh, that's job for this beautiful sunny afternoon. Shed tidy, I love a shed tidy. I'm not gonna film it because of all the things that would be incredibly boring to watch, it would be me just tidying a shed. So um, I'll show you all before and I will show you an after. Welcome to the before. So as you can see, everything's jammed in every which way. We've got loads of seeds being collected and I started building another frame that I kind of abandoned halfway through. So that's in here. Basically, we've just got stuff stuck everywhere. The cupboard's a mess even, just, oh, it's dreadful. But like I say, we've got seeds being collected everywhere. We've got cat biscuits. We've even got all of our shallots being hung out here to dry. So they weren't actually a bad harvest. So we've got something out of them, even though they had the white rot. Seeds strewn everywhere. We've got flower pots and cardigans and pencils and WD-40. And I'll tell you what we've got most of cobwebs masses and masses and masses of cobwebs <laughs> and more seeds they're poppies yeah so it's just old labels there's just loads of stuff in here that i just need to sort out it's getting silly all of these things need to be put in order for uh, what i sewed last month and what i'm going to sew this month we've got a lot of stuff on top of the work surface but we've also got a lot of stuff underneath the work surface so most of the stuff to do with the chickens is stored under here. All these bottles and bits and pieces and sprays are mostly for the chickens. We've got all the tools that we only sort of sometimes use are in the bottom here. String and weedproof matting and everything just strewn everywhere. Okay. Action. Okay, I'm at about halfway point. I think it's time for a cup of coffee. The sun is still shining. It is magnificent. we've got something quite exciting to have with our coffee today because we went on a bit of a trip yesterday. We went to a place called Merton Abbey Mills, which actually isn't that far away from me, but uh, I had no idea it existed. So it's kind of in the Merton area, as you would imagine. And look, it even had a water wheel, but we're not here for the water wheel. We're here because the blushing cook who makes the world's finest brownies is opening the doors to her premises. Aren't we, mum? She's not listening. <laughs> Yeah. 
So this is the menu of dreams, and I'm going to go for a floral blondie rather than a brownie because I had a conversation with my friend's husband. I say conversation, he just ranted for about 15 minutes straight how amazing Sammy's blondies were, so uh, I don't feel I have a choice in that matter, I've got to have one. And mum is going to choose the chocolate and hazelnut one. Mm -mm -mm. And here are the masterpieces themselves. Blondie, brownie. I'm gonna go quarters. Okay. So, yeah, is that all right with you? <laughs> they are extra soft because it's so warm today. photos of that one. I squashed it. loveliest things. Right, I better go back and finish the shed I think. Well it's quite late. <laughs> it's like 10 to 6 and I finished the shed. I'm feeling really pleased with myself. I'm so dusty and covered in spider's webs and dust and dirt and all sorts of stuff. Um, Anyway, it is done. The only thing that I've got left to do is over there are still all of the seeds. You know, I had the big bags of seeds that um, we've been collecting. Well, I'm just gonna put them on the floor in here before we leave to keep them dry and then I will process them tomorrow. So they've still got all their stalks on and everything. It's just taking up way too much space. So um, I'm gonna process them tomorrow. So other than them, it's all done. So are you ready for the satisfaction of, shy of, of Shidey Ted? It's not shidey Ted, of Tidy Shed. Da, 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 da. Even got the cobwebs off the top of the door. <laughs> Look at this great expanse of a work surface with no clutter on it. Very pleasing. Everything is in its correct place. The little cupboard, I've got all the seeds in here now. So that should keep any mice away and everything as well. So I've just got them into the piles of what I need to sew when. Various bits and pieces that I'm um, halfway through processing up here. I've got some Rebecca and some garlic chives and stuff. All of the tools are on their correct hooks again. Dustpan and brush has a hook. Oh, so satisfying. <laughs> We've also got some new screws to hang the light and the kettle on so that they're not in the way anymore. And this is pretty exciting. Have a look at this. I was sent this fantastic present completely out of the blue from Kim. I love it and I'm so glad I've got it up in the shed. It's really very fitting. <laughs> also, I've put an extra rack on for the tools. So putting things up in a shed is quite tricky because the shed walls are so thin. So you've got to put a batten across. But I've hung everything on its own peg now, so they're not all jumbled up. The bits box, all the bits and pieces for building things. We've got all the labels and pens and pencils, string and screws. Even put some new pegs up for the cups with a bit more of that spare old split board, but it does the job. Going underneath, this is an idea that I've shamelessly stolen off Marf but she bought a load of these just paper bags for picking stuff in rather than using the plastic bits and pieces. So I'm pretty excited about that. Chicken stuff all organized, gloves organized. All of the spray bottles have been washed out. I get asked sometimes why we've got so many spray bottles if we don't use chemicals, but you end up using spray bottles for so many things, whether it's foliar feed or if you're using garlic spray or any of those kind of stuff, it's all good. 
Everything under here has been sorted through and tidied. And this is where my bum will be tomorrow, editing the video in here, in this clean and tidy, beautiful space. <laughs> Oh, one more bit of innovation in the shed. I've attached a um, very high-tech chalk holder to the edge. <laughs> so the chalk is now straight underneath and that means that I can just cross off, clear out the shed. Oh, satisfying. Well, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed just pottering around in the shed, sorting stuff out, I love sorting stuff out and tidying everything up, giving it a good sweep and the sunshine, oh, can you see that on my face? The last little bit of evening sun. Oh, it's been gorgeous. And supposedly we have got, how many days? Like four days of really good weather coming up. I really hope that they haven't lied again because through the summer we've been promised, you know, like, oh, there's a heat wave on the way. There's this, 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 there's this, and then like nothing happened. So I'm hoping that this isn't all uh, a lie and that we do actually have some beautiful weather coming up because it makes such a difference to everything i'm not particularly fussed about the hot like i don't want it hot i'm not i'm not mad i, I i'm not a great fan of hot weather because i'm just a sweaty mess but just sunshine you know and just the grayness i love gray days when you haven't had a gray day for a while like there's just something beautiful about the light and your eyes are like just drawing in the light on a really gray day and i love them then but uh, when you just get relentless gray days after a while it kind of wears you down a bit and then the sun comes out and you get a blue sky and basically i just like alternating weather give me a bit of everything and i'm happy not just like monotone gray skies for however long we've had monotone gray skies for so anyway uh, we have basically finished up here for the day. I'm going to go home, have a glass of wine and probably sit in the garden with the cat. Hey girls, we are off now. Girly, girly, girlies. Have you had a nice day too? Yeah, I think so. Been doing lots of chatting, haven't you? Hmm? Yeah, right. See you in the morning, girlies. See you in the morning, girlies. Well, it seems extraordinary to say that, what's the date today? 5th, 6th, something like that, of September. And this is actually, apart from maybe really early in the year, this is like the first time I've sat in the garden at the end of the day with a glass of wine. Oh, it's bliss as well. The air is warm, the sky is still blue. It's beautiful and it's meant to last for another two days so i'm going to enjoy every second of it so yeah we got quite a lot done this week i'm really starting to get into the flow of kind of just getting up and going to the allotment every day again which is nice just as winter comes in you know <laughs> so a couple of things to say firstly there wasn't a great deal about chickens today because i've been doing a lot of filming of the chickens but thursday's video is going to be all about the new girls and what they're called and how they're working out. So that's gonna be Thursday's video and I'm really looking forward to doing it. So uh, yeah, because they're lovely and just spending loads of times with the chickens is um, pretty good. So when we went to Sammy's um, shop opening, so her shop isn't open all the time. It's not like a walk-in shop. It's just where she does the baking. Most of it is online, so it's just for delivery. But she's planning, I think she's going to be opening up possibly once a month, something like that. But I will leave all of the details of where you can order her unbelievable brownies uh, underneath here. So it'll all be in the video description. They are something else. Like I've got to admit, I never really understood brownies. They're nice. I like them, you know, like bit squidgy, bit chocolate. So I know Sammy through a friend of mine and um, I knew what she made and I sort of followed her on Instagram and so I'd seen how beautiful they were. And when it was our uh, one year vlog anniversary, I decided I was gonna order myself, cause they're special occasion brownies, like they're not just some, they're not, sorry, we've got an airplane going over. <laughs> um, they're not something that like you do every day. But I thought a special occasion, I'll order it and that'll be what I'm using as like my, my birthday cake for the vlog. Well, anyway, I ordered them 
I was well excited and then I realised because I've got the organisational skills of a mushroom, I'd ordered them to come the week later rather than the actual week. Uh, fantastic Jesse, I did an excellent job there. Firstly, I didn't want to eat them because they were so lovely and then when I did eat them, I was like, oh my goodness me, this, this is what a brownie is supposed to be like. So anyway, I'll stop going on about brownies. <laughs> They're really good. Uh, I'll leave her um, website underneath because for a special occasion, if you need something just a little bit extra. Mm. But one thing that she did have in her workshop, in her shop, um, was, you know, I store my seeds in those little trays where, um, like from Ikea, she had that set up on steroids. Like, have a look at this. She's got like a hundred of them and it's all got different flowers in it. And uh, I've got massive, massive small draw envy. Massive. <laughs> one day, one day I'm gonna have that exact setup, but with seeds on it rather than flowers. Mm. So what did I do today? Other than bask in the sunshine, um, I went and did the editing for this video up in the newly tidied shed, which was uh, an absolute pleasure. I could just fit my feet under the table, I could sit on my chair, there was none of this like shoving bits out the way all the time, and it was magnificent. And that, chaps, is about all I've got to say. Um, I've edited this video, it's actually Monday night tonight, and I've edited this video like a day early, get me. <laughs> because I'm going back to college tomorrow, not college to work, college to do an evening class so like halfway through the day so in the afternoon I won't be here normally my Tuesdays are filled with me just like panic editing and uh, like <gasps> the last couple of weeks it's taken ages to upload them and all that kind of thing so I had it I've got it finished a day early so it will be up on time and I will be at college doing things yeah so anyway Hope you have a wonderful week. I hope this weather is this glorious wherever you are. Or if you were waiting for rain, I hope you've got rain. If you're waiting for sun, I hope you've got sun. Um, Thursday is going to be all about the girly whirly woos. And um, I'll see you next week. Oh, we've got a troop of motorcycles going past now. Excellent. Right. <laughs> Cheers, chaps. I will see you on Thursday with the girlies. And then I will see you next Tuesday for more allotmenty type things. Cheers. Of Shidey Ted. <laughs> <laughs>